Thank you so much for your time today. Markets are stalling in the likes of the European Union, this filtering through into South Africa as well. But no surprise there, given the fact that we did see such an incredible rally for the South African markets and, of course, U.S. markets as well. Uh, give us your view in terms of where markets are headed in today's session. Do you think we're going to be seeing uh, more muted trade as we go along, purely because we have been seeing some of the great numbers coming through already and most of these have been factored in? Yes, I think a little bit of profit taking coming into the market. We had a good rally yesterday. Um, and I think there's a lot of news coming out of the States this afternoon. There's pending home sales. There's a lot of reporting coming out. And I think that the market will be relatively muted waiting for these uh, these indicators coming out of the States. So I think a little bit of profit taking. And we're also looking at the commodities uh, looking relatively firm at the moment mm -hmm. uh, and, and strong. So people, uh, Anglos has broken out from the 300 range and trading up. So people watching these levels closely. But the market as a whole is uh, reaching resistant levels. So people are watching these resistant levels very carefully to see if we're going to break to the upside or we're going to pull back down into that range again. Uh, taking a look at the PMI numbers that were released yesterday, some disappointed. The US, though, came in slightly better, better than expected, 55.5 for the month of July from around 56.2 in June. So softer, but again, as higher than expected. We also, of course, going to be focusing on the auto sales in the US. Analysts expect to see a 2.8% rise uh, increase in the auto sales from June. And also keeping in mind that it's also been a focus in today's session in South Africa. You're talking about breaking through certain resistance levels. What is going Going to push us higher from here onwards? I think uh, continued good earnings coming out of the States will be one of the factors that push us push us higher. Um, and then obviously we took, if you take a look at uh, the, the PMI figures coming out of Europe, Germany had uh, very, very good numbers and within those numbers they also employed a lot of people. Um, and just show you where you start to employ people, uh, the, the manufacturing sector starts to, to, to start to run and starts to perform very well. So I think that uh, if we can get very good vehicle numbers out of South Africa, we're relatively good and a very good uh, bunch of uh, vehicle numbers coming out of the States, uh, it leads for that sector to start to employ. And as soon as we start to get that unemployment number down and employment up, that will be the kicker to push us through the, the resistance levels where we are currently. Rob, on Monday uh, we had Fed ex, uh, ex Fed Chairman uh, uh, Alan Greenspan talking about house uh, prices and if they do come under pressure once again, we could still see a double dip scenario playing out. And in yesterday's session, uh, we also had some interesting comments out of Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke talking about high unemployment, and that is going to definitely be an issue, and how the weak housing market is weighing on consumers. But he did say that higher wages is going to assist uh, the recovery in the US. How do you see that playing out going forward? Well, there are two contradictory uh, comments but between uh, Bernanke and Greenspan there. I think uh, Bernanke came in to say that the increased wages will help the consumer in America start to spend. Um, and if they start spending on their houses on construction, um, that will help obviously stay away from that uh, dip in house pricing. Uh, but obviously the consumer is very important in the States. It makes up 70% of the GDP in America. And I think if uh, the, the increase in wages continues, um, that will support uh, consumer spending and it will also support then um, employment. So I think the, the real kicker here is that we don't really want to have a recovery with uh, unemployment, with no employment. Uh, and we really need, if we want to get through these levels, we need to start creating employment throughout the world. And I think that uh, continued spending will be a start of that. Uh, banks need to start lending. You can start to see as a stimulus pulls away from, from governments. They keep saying that the banks have to start lending um, and lending will obviously lead to spending. So you have to spend to make money. Looking at the RAND, uh, of course we have been heading even stronger over the last few sessions as risk appetite comes to the fore. We've also heard news that you know it is about intervention and control and trying to control that very strong RAND. The ANC has come out with a suggestion in terms of tax on foreign portfolio inflows. What is your view on this and do you think that if we do start seeing a weaker RAND uh, that perhaps is going to start creating issues on the inflation front? Uh, definitely can. If we take a look at the oil price in 2009 to today, um, it's up 86 percent. If you take the RAND oil price, it's only up 46 percent. So you show that a, a strong RAND has definitely helped with inflationary pressures and it also helps with uh, expanding our, our factory production. Um, you know, if we, if we start to produce on a very weak RAND and then we need to expand, um, if you want to import capital, uh, capital products, uh, and big machinery, it starts to become very expensive. So there is a fine line of, of a RAND that's too weak, uh, it leads to a lot of inflation and then also stops us from producing in, uh, excess production later on when we need to increase the capacity of our factories. So it is quite a fine line. I think that the RAND um, 720 and below is definitely too strong for South Africa, but you don't want a RAND that's too soft that, uh, that uh, leads to massive inflationary pressure.
pressures and then also that we can't start to compete uh, from our factory point of view because we can't produce because it's too expensive to to increase our, our production capability so quite a fine line there and, and I think that they will intervene slightly but they don't have enough money to really make too much of an impact on that rand. Uh, Rob, and finally, how are you playing the markets today? You did mention there's going to be various economic data set to be released uh, in the U.S. Uh, later on in the trading session. Also, just keeping in mind, we do have the ECB and BOE uh, making a decision on interest rates later on this week. So lots to look forward to as an investor, but mostly priced in. Yes, mostly passed in the markets relatively high. We're trading at good highs at the moment. I'll be cautious on the buy-in side. I'd like to see some uh, consistent numbers coming out of the States, some good earnings coming out of the States before I start to buy at these levels. Um, I'll be taking a little bit of money off the table if I was in the market, a little bit of profit taking, uh, and wait to see in the next few days if these, num these good numbers continue. Uh, and if we start to break through the resistance levels, uh, then I'll be looking to buy only.